Hi, Kerry Phipps here, Connecting with Confidence. I am really delighted to be connecting you today with Patrick Galvin. He's the author of The Connector's Way, a story about building business one relationship at a time. I met Patrick in Singapore just over a year ago at the Asia Professional Speakers Convention. Of course, we had so much to talk about. He loved the idea of my book, Do Talk to Strangers, How to Connect with Anyone Anywhere. And of course, I was in love with The Connector's Way. And it's such a beautiful story. And I really have loved not just today's conversation with Patrick, but also every conversation with him, every interaction. I see what he's doing on LinkedIn. He's sharing fantastic little useful tips about connecting. He really is about building business one relationship at a time. And often people are focused on one aspect over the other, focusing on building business and can forget a little bit, a little bit about the relationships as we go. So enjoy this episode. I look forward to hearing your comments. Everybody has certain natural advantages that will make them good relationship builders. You just need to be aware and encourage and focus on their strengths and they can build a tremendous network of connections. Thank you, Patrick, for joining me for this conversation. Every conversation with you is an absolute delight. I feel so uplifted, inspired, challenged, motivated. I'm really thrilled that we can take some time just to have a conversation about connecting you're the author of the connector's way i remember meeting you in singapore just over a year ago hard to believe huh what a different world <laughs> yeah and i was just so delighted just to meet you and to see your book and uh, something that i've really noticed recently i guess there's no surprise because i saw this in you in the beginning but i've seen you on linkedin i've seen you sharing just little videos and they're so powerful because they're super encouraging but they're very practically helpful in helping people shift into the focus of connecting meaningfully and generously. Do you want to tell me more about your thinking behind what you've been sharing? I think there are a lot of people who confuse connecting and networking. It's yeah. not about going out and meeting as many people as you possibly can and hoping for the best. It's really about taking your existing relationships and cultivating those as much as you possibly can and I think a lot of times people think that they need to meet more people. And the reality is we have a lot of connections that we kind of let drift away. And actually some of those are some of the best people who you want to connect with. Connecting and serving others really should go hand in hand. So what I'm doing with the videos, what I do in my own life is really look for ways to serve others without thinking how I'm going to benefit. That's one of my seven rules for building business one relationship at a time. And it's my favorite one, which is service. When you can equate connecting and serving others, that's a really nice equation. It is. And, you know, it's something that comes up as I share about this too. When we connect with an attitude of service, then we're not nervous. We're not worried about the outcome. We can just really be in the joy of the moment, can't we? Right. It's a, it's a mindset. And when you stop thinking about, well, what am I going to get out of this relationship or this person? Um, it becomes a lot more relaxing, a lot more fun. And the good news is things will come out of it. And that's just human nature. It's reciprocity. There's a yeah. American ac academic, Robert Cialdini, who wrote a great book called Influence. When we serve others, people want to serve us back. So if we can just divest ourselves of thinking, you know, what's the quid pro quo and just do it because it's the right thing to do. It's a lot more fun to be of service to others and things will sort themselves out and come back to us. It's really just a, a very pleasant way to live. It is. Have you always felt like this? You know, how long have you been in business? Tell us a little bit of the background to this. Been in business for almost 20 years with our existing company, which is a company that's devoted to helping people grow through relationship. We're a coaching enterprise. Uh, we're doing a lot of e-learning right now in this crazy new virtual world that we're in. And it's really the way I'm wired. And one of the things that I've had to do is really try to decode myself because what comes naturally to me does not come naturally to other people. And I'm not saying that to brag or to sound more important, but I, I realize that there's just different comfort levels that people have. You know, some people have a flair for it, just a joy of doing it. And I certainly put you in that camp, Perry. You're one of the best connectors I've ever met in my life. I see you doing that decoding too and really helping people understand how they can 
lean into their skill set. We all have things to contribute and you don't need to be an extrovert. You do such a great job of sharing that message with people. We all can be great connectors. It's a mindset first. You and I naturally have it, but there's also a skill set and everybody has certain natural advantages that will make them good relationship builders. You just need to be aware and encourage and focus on their strengths and they can build a tremendous network of connections. Absolutely. And I, I really appreciate that you said it's not about, well, the skill set can be learned, but what did you say? It's not about... It's a, it's a mindset. First, you have to you know, say, okay, this is going to be the way I want to roll in the world. I want to be a relationship builder. And once you have that as your starting point, then you can lean into the skills that you have and you can go out and acquire the skills that will make you more effective in terms of building relationships. Yeah. It's not about whether you're extrovert or introvert. It's, no. it's about building that skill set. And I know coming back to this thing of service, it's like, yes, if we start with that, and that's probably what I was most natural at. That's what I grew up with. That was the, the vibe or the way of being, you know, is, is look for opportunities to serve people. And you do find great joy in that. But certainly as a networker or, you know, as a business connector, I would feel very intimidated. So it very much is about building a skill set. And I think, you know, that coaching really supports you with questions that put other people at ease, that help people do the best thinking. Absolutely something that we can learn. But shifting our focus from what do I get from this to how can I serve people? How can I help other people not feel nervous, to feel welcome or to feel included? When we have that kind of focus, it just creates this flow and anything is possible. Agreed. Yeah. 100%. Something else that I've noticed in your language is like your generosity of words. You've recently shared about doing testimonials for people without being asked, you know, just going in and surprising somebody in your network, somebody who you've seen is fantastic in their work, committed to their community, just go in there and share some generous words to tell the world, you know, how great that person is, but also it just makes their day, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So how would you feel if you opened your uh, inbox and you saw something from LinkedIn saying, oh, your friend Jane has just recommended you. Wait, I didn't ask Jane for a recommendation. And you click it and you read this beautiful recommendation. Wouldn't that lift your spirits? And how many of us have had that feeling? The truth about LinkedIn that a lot of people don't realize is most recommendations that you see on that platform are there because somebody went out to their network and asked for the recommendation. Yes. If you become the person who spontaneously recommends without being asked, it is incredible the feedback that you're going to get. And it doesn't take a lot of time. When you get good at writing a recommendation, it takes about five to 10 minutes and you don't have to have it in perfect marketing speak. In fact, that would not help. It wouldn't sound authentic. Just reflect on that person. Why would you want to do business with them again and again and again? Why do you tell your friends about that person? And that's the sort of thing you need to share in your recommendation. About 100 to 200 words is all you need for a really lovely recommendation. Once you start doing that, uh, you're going to get some great feedback from people and it will be a reinforced action that you're going to go back to. And it doesn't ne necessarily just have to be on LinkedIn. If you know a business owner, go out to Google and write a review for them. I mean, that is huge for a business owner or go on to Yelp or whatever platform would be meaningful for that person. And you might even ask them hey, you know, where could you use a lift in social media? I want to put it where it's going to be most helpful to you. Maybe it's a Facebook review. I mean, wherever it is, it's going to be different. And people are going to be amazed because how often does that happen? The folks who are watching us having this conversation, how many people have done this for you without your asking for it? And I bet you it's a handful in most cases and maybe none in many cases. And just think about it from that perspective. Boy, if it would mean that much to you, wouldn't it mean a lot to the person that you're doing it for? So why not give it a go? Absolutely. You know, and it's a part of LinkedIn that I haven't used a lot. I've done maybe 20 recommendations and probably received about 20 recommendations. But last night I did sit down to do a couple, having seen you talk about this. Good. This another, I love a good, it. A Instant reminder. action. That is, that is fantastic. And then I messaged the person that I was recommending and I said, I've got a little surprise for you, but maybe you'd like to give me a hint as to how to do it best. And I said, I would love to write a recommendation for you because I've seen the leadership that you're demonstrating right now. You know, I'm just really grateful. And I just want to you know, send you a virtual hug. But is there anything specific that you don't see coming through that you'd like me to point out? What response did you get? Oh, my gosh, she was blown away. And uh, so she was grateful and said a couple of comments. And I was like, 
oh, absolutely, that that's her. So when I sent the recommendation through, it wasn't long before I got another message back just going, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Because I did, <laughs> I did add, you know, I'm pretty tired right now, like it's late. Uh, so please let me know if I can make that more succinct. It just completely made a day. That was well, really lucky. You... It's nice to make people's day. And then, Patrick, I, I think I was just about to go to bed and Lyndon said, oh, somebody's put a review on your, on your podcast. And I just, and he read the name and I was like, I don't, I don't recognize that name. And it's the most beautiful review on the Apple podcast. I was like, what? That's amazing. I haven't asked anybody for a review. Uh, you know, and I know sometimes business leaders in a specific thing, like in LinkedIn or, you know, various marketing, they'll tell you, make sure you're asking for, you know, like shares, reviews, make sure you're sending people to your website, make sure there's all of these boxes ticked. You know, Patrick, I forget all the boxes. <laughs> I'm just all about the conversation. But, you know, that's interesting. So the common advice is ask, ask, ask. It's not give, give, give. Yeah. I think people have it backwards. I really do. Yeah, and I just love hearing you say that because sometimes I've doubted myself because I hear everybody with their business skills talking about how you have to do things. And I think, oh, Patrick, honestly, I just want to love people. And it's the people that I come across each day. I don't know what they're going through. I don't know what word of encouragement might support. And when I think of people in my world who really inspire me, it's people who speak words of life. That's what I woke up journaling about this morning. I was thinking of you. I was thinking about many other friends who just, it's their natural language. They're speaking words of encouragement. They're building you up. And it's had such a powerful impact in my life that I think it must have a powerful impact for others too. It absolutely does. It is the right thing to do if you want to live a full and whole life and just feel like a good human being. But here's the good news. It's also really smart for business. And it comes back to you. When you start kicking yourself out of, well, is this one going to be the one that I wrote a recommendation that's going to come back to me? Just don't worry about it. When you go forward with this attitude and you just are doing this, things will spill back on you and sometimes way more than you could possibly imagine. I was just thinking, if you just give someone a tip at a restaurant because they just made your day, you walk out of there, you're not expecting them to chase you down the street and say, can I do business with you? No. You're just giving. You know, if you say to the cafe owner, can I just pay for two coffees now so you can give one to someone later in the day? You're not expecting anything to come back. And it's like we have these moments of spontaneous generosity, but what if we build that into our everyday? What if we look for opportunities to be generous? Yeah, everyday? and some people are doing it right now and others are, are really missing out. So in this age of pandemic, I'm in the States, you're in Australia, but this is a global thing. We have an opportunity to really strengthen relationships with people. I was on a podcast of two very successful uh, female realtors uh, in the States. And whenever I go on a podcast, I want to listen and hear, you know, what they're talking about, what their style is. And I had heard them on a podcast about a month before I went on complaining that they were busy getting on the phone, talking to home buyers and sellers who they'd worked with in the past, just touching base. Hey, how are you managing uh, coronavirus? How's this affecting your family? Is it hard running your homeschool and your business? And just really kind of creating conversation, expressing empathy and seeing if they could maybe give them a tip and advice, introduce them to someone, help them out. And they are super successful at what they do because they're relationship builders. And one of them complained and the other said the same thing was happening to her. They had not received a single phone call from a service provider touching base in the same way that they were touching base with their clientele. And I went on to the podcast. I said, hey, has that changed? Has anyone reached out? And one of them said that one of her bankers had called her, not because he heard the podcast, but because he was doing the right thing and said, hey, Linda, how are you doing right now? How's your family doing? They had a 10 minute conversation. So this banker was one of a multitude of bankers that she works with. And she got off that call and she said, honey, she turned to her husband, guess who we're going to be banking a lot more with in the future? So the banker did the right thing. He connected on a human level. And it had an impact on her. And there are a lot of people like you and I who value that connection and relationship that people who provide us services can give us. And when they do that, we feel more loyalty to them. We want to do business with them. And she was going to be transferring a lot of money out of banks that just look at her as a transaction point and not as a human being. Mm. So, you know, you do the right thing. And I think right now people will pick up the phone more, or you can schedule a Zoom call, you can do virtual coffees and really just connect with people. 
start looking at your LinkedIn connections or go through your other social media uh, platforms and look at people who you haven't spoken with for a long time. This is a great opportunity to reach out and say, hey, can we have a 15 minute conversation? Let's catch up. I wanna hear how you're doing during this time of pandemic. And everyone's gonna say yes to 15 minutes. And you know, after 15 minutes say, hey, I've gone 15. I don't wanna you know, overstay my welcome. And if it's a great conversation, they're gonna to wanna to keep talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. Patrick, this is where we find ourselves now. I want to keep talking to you. So okay. can, we, can we do a part two? Because I feel there's so much more we can delve into in terms of how words have such power. And absolutely. Whether okay. it's, whether it's you know, getting better at the written word and sending little recommendations or reviews or little notes of encouragement, or whether it is in the way that we communicate. Because I know that it's something that I've struggled with. I, I think all the... You know, or I feel like I admire someone so much, but then how do I put that into words? And I think that's something we could unpack a bit more in another episode. Fantastic. I look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patrick. Have an awesome week. You too.